training at the beach versus training inland. What's the difference? How does that work? So first you have to understand what training is. What is training? Because you hear people all the time say, get good training. Well, what's training? Training results in real, actual skills. Now, how are skills built? Skills are built through hours and hours and hours and hours of practice. It takes about 25 to 60 hours of practice, typically, um, depending on the person. You know, if you're super fast, maybe 25 hours to 60 hours of practice with the glider to really build a solid level of glider control. Okay, so let's think about that. 25 to 60 hours. Now, inland, how long is it going to take you to build 25 to 60 hours of kiting practice? Well, like here in Utah, for example, or inland pretty much anywhere, you get this wind, you get that, you get no wind, it's all over. So if you go out in, say, 10 days' time, you might be able to get three, four, five hours of practice in 10 days' time to be able to have wind, where if you go to the correct beach, you could practice literally upwards of 10 hours a day. You can practice all day. It's more a physical limit. So you end up practicing anywhere from three to, say, 10, 11 hours each and every day. So building 25 to 60 hours of glider control practice, so you really master control the glider, is very simple at the beach. But inland, it would literally take you a year or maybe even two years to be able to build 25 to 60 hours of kiting the glider. How do you kite the glider if you don't have wind? Well, you can make your own wind by running. So, but think about that. Do you want to run 11 miles an hour for 25 to 60 hours? <laughs> That's not going to go over so well. That might be fun for the first 12 minutes, but you're not going to be, it just doesn't work that way. And the only difference between no wind inland and wind at the beach is simply how fast your feet are moving. Because if you need seven mile an hour wind inland, no problem. You just run seven miles an hour. Which, for a launch, that only takes, you know, six seconds. And so, no problem launching inland and no wind because you simply run, but you only have to run for maybe six seconds. If that, maybe more like three, four, five seconds. So, that's totally doable. But to build 25 to 60 hours of being able to control the glider and feel the glider and build the instincts and reflexes to be able to respond to what's going on instinctively and build in hundreds of little details of glider control all working together so you lean, walk, pull and do basically a zillion different things all at the same time instantly reflexes, glider goes the other way, lean, walk, build, boom. You gotta have those skills, it takes hours. That's why you simply can't realistically train inland. It just doesn't work. I wouldn't drive 1,500 miles to the coast if I could just go train in the field down the street. Obviously, I would much rather train locally if it was possible. The problem is, from vast, vast experience, if you try and do local training, it just doesn't work out. Nobody can attain a realistic skill level. So anyone you see pretending to offer training inland is not training anyone. You're not getting 25 to 60 hours of practice and then hundreds of flights of experience on top of it. You're getting maybe zero to three hours of practice. And the bottom line is simply look at the skills of the results. So Anyone can say, oh, I'm an instructor, but in this sport, there's no license whatsoever. And in fact, there's fake organizations pretending to offer licenses, and those are totally fake as well. There is no license required, so there is no certification. So you have to do a little more due diligence than just go, oh yeah, my buddy's an instructor. Really? Let's see the skill level. So very, very critical to look at the skill level of who you're talking to and taking advice from and look at the skill level of their students. Look for those videos. 
If somebody says they're an instructor, well, look them up on YouTube. YouTube's a great <laughs> resource. Look them up, look for their new students, and look for their students demonstrating skills. You're not gonna build jack squat for skills in 20 minutes to three hours. It's not gonna happen. So training inland, it is just not realistic. It's not gonna happen. Um, another thing I hear a lot of is people, their first instinct is, oh, I wanna just get something local. I can't afford to go someplace. Well, in reality, you can't afford to do it local because for one, you're never gonna get trained. And for two, do you really have one to two years to learn, <laughs> it's like you can go and knock out the training in 10 days and do it right, or you could totally waste your time and money thinking you're gonna do it locally because somehow that's easier. It doesn't work that way. Or you see people travel like, oh, I've got one only a couple hours from me. Well, if you're gonna travel a couple hours by car, it makes more sense to travel a couple hours by plane and just fly to the absolute best location so that you can get the most possible practice and best possible training into that reasonable amount of time. It takes about 10 days approximately for the majority of people uh, to get up to where they have a solid level of skill. So if you just look at it logically, it just makes sense. It's like a logic 101. You need 25 to 60 hours of practice and hundreds of flights possibly. How are you gonna get that inland? It's not gonna happen because you don't get 25 to 60 hours of being able to kite the glider. So another thing people say is, oh, you can't learn to fly inland by training at the beach. False. So, it's completely absurd. They're like, oh, our wind isn't steady like at the beach. Anybody can kite at the beach. False. Let's see them demonstrate some skills. Nice job, cameraman. <laughs> the, uh, so it's all about demonstrating the skills. Can they reverse kite? No hands. Do you see them doing perfect running jumps over and over and over? I mean, it's super training. You need to be able to do 10 in a row without fail or we don't put you in the air because it's not about just doing something once and getting lucky. It's about practicing it over and over and over and over, not till you get it right, but until you never get it wrong. So you can knock out at least 10 in a row without a single fail or loss of control. Because once you put that motor on the back, it's just, it's not fun to lose control of the glider and drop it on top of yourself and shred it in the prop. Shwap! There goes your $3,800 glider, and then it shreds cage pieces, destroys everything else. That's not fun, it's not a good experience. And if people don't get super training, you got about a 96, 97% chance you're gonna quit the sport. Cause it's just not gonna be fun. You're not gonna have control. You're not gonna feel in control. So you're not gonna feel safe. And it's just not gonna be the experience that you perceive it to be. Where you come to super training, you master the skills correctly by getting all the pieces and taking that 25 to 60 hours to work it into reflexes and then knocking out hundreds of flights on top of it, dialing in every single little detail. I mean, look at the videos. We had a super student set a world record. He knocked out 530 flights by the end of the 10 days. If there were other people providing this level of training, where's the video? Let's see it. It's not about ego. It's like Bruce Lee. It's like, hey, this is what I got. If you can beat me, then your system's better. Bring it on. Whoa. It's the Bruce Lee thing. It's not about ego. It's about simple fact versus fact, truth versus truth. If they're offering training, let's see the skills. If they're producing better skills in super training, Great, let's see it, post the video at the bottom. So basically the bottom line is very clear. You simply are not gonna get true and real actual training without having that perfect beach to train on so that you can actually get your 25 to 60 hours of glider control practice on top of upwards of 530 flights of experience. That's simply the way it is. Do your research, look at the videos, look at the skills of super students that we've trained, people come through uh, super training class and compare skill against skill. Not he said, she said, skill against skill. That's the way to do it. 
logic, reason, stick with the facts, and deal with people that are really doing the job correctly. Let's go flying.